All right, uh, waiting for Donald Trump. He's out in California. He is uh, going to have a press conference, we're told, out there, but he'll elaborate on some new plans to extend tax cuts way beyond just revisiting the tax cuts that are expiring from his administration. Uh, ahead of that, I want to go to Wilbur Ross, his Commerce Secretary. Uh, Wilbur's got a great book out right now, Risks and Returns, Creating Success in Business and Life. Um, and, you know, Wilbur, it's always good to have you. I, 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 I thought of you and, and how much I thought I knew you, but I was not aware of your past. I did not know uh, what you had to deal with as a kid, losing your dad, where you were still a teenager, having to pay for college on your own. Um, and even before that, you had, your dad wanted to toughen you up and deal with adversity. Well, it all worked, so touche to you on that. But um, your old boss is facing some adversity right now and some second guessing over the wisdom of nixing a debate, another debate with Kamala Harris. How do you feel about that, that he is not going to debate her again? Well, I think debates are actually more about style than about substance. And particularly when the moderators in the debate were very one-sided against Trump and for Harris. You could see it in the way they fact-checked everything he said, very little that she said. But presidency is not mostly about style. Presidency is about substance. And the substance of Donald Trump is we had very low inflation when he was president. We had very low unemployment when he was president. And we had relative peace throughout the world when he was but president. But he never did any of that, right, Wilbur? He never did. And it was this, you, you, you're very prescient in a very low-key way, which I've always admired about you. you don't, there's no histrionics or drama right. to you. But I, I caught a radio interview you did, I believe on WABC, where you said ahead of that debate that uh, the only danger is Trump being big and strong and a man. He has to be careful not to be seen as piling on a woman. She baited him. And that's right. what created the piling on. And, and it almost seemed as if you saw that coming. Well, again, it was a very clever move on her part. But this is not auditioning to play the role of president. This is auditioning to be the president. She has no record of achievement. She doesn't even really have detailed plans except spend a lot more and raise taxes on people. It's not yeah, a problem. Yeah, but he didn't do any of that, right, Wilbur? And, I, and I'm, uh, you know, you don't want to belabor it. As you said, it's done, it's over, it's, it's, there's not more debates. But, but he missed a clear opportunity, and, and it, it revealed an aspect of him. Uh, and you've heard about Kamala Harris and the 200 former administration officials of his who don't want him back in the White House. You're certainly not among those, I understand. No. And there are many, many more who dispute uh, what they're doing and saying about their former boss but that he's thin-skinned and a little uh, hot-headed and, uh, you know, a danger. What, what did you make of all of that post-debate talk? Well, I think it was unfortunate, and uh, I wish it had not occurred, but I don't think it's the end of the earth, because I think Americans know what the regime was like when Trump was president. They know that they were relatively better off under Trump than they have been since. And a lot of play acting and a lot of baiting. That's a nice debating tactic. But <laughs> substance is what's really going to count for the American public over the next four years. And I didn't see what she came up with that was substantive. Let me get your take on where things stand now. The, the former president is going to outline some additional tax cuts he wants to to see. Of course, he's already on record uh, now saying that he doesn't want right. to tax Social Security benefits, doesn't now extend that to overtime workers, that they shouldn't be taxed on that overtime work. Uh, you know, uh, th those who rely on tip income and no tax on tips and all. How do we pay for all of this? Well, the only way we're ever going to get the deficit down is to grow rapidly. If this economy can be made to grow that's something like 4% or so, then the deficits will go down. Everything will be better off. The problem with the, what the Democrats are doing is nothing there that will stimulate the economy. Under Trump, the economy was very good, and we were starting to get 
more participation in the labor force. Well, there are only three things that are the components of growth in an economy like ours. One is the change in amount of people in the working age population. No president can change that much. It's pretty well been yeah. set by the birth rate. Second is labor force participation. And that's going nowhere under these people. So the third, so that's a negative. The third thing is productivity. And all this kind of spending that they're doing has nothing to do with productivity. So I don't see how they can grow the economy enough to survive with the growing debt burden. The only way to make it survive is to really increase workforce participation. And Trump was doing that. We were accomplishing it. Right now, over a third of able-bodied working age Americans neither have a job nor want one. That's not how you build a country. And the but you are worried about debt, right, Wilbur? You are worried about oh, that. Yeah. And then this Wharton study I, that's been done says that his plan is going to add $5 trillion to it. Hers a little under, I believe, $1.5 uh, Now, those numbers probably were, aren't worth the paper they're printed on. But neither candidate seems to be very worried about the debt. Does that bother you? Well, I, I know from my personal experience with Trump that he understands that the way to get the economy to be able to live with debt burden is rapid growth. And that's what he's aiming toward. Her programs, taxing successful people, taxing successful businesses, is, is not the way to stimulate. But the worst thing is there will be more and more regulation. And when we were in office, when businessmen would come to see me, they were much more grateful for regulatory reform than they were even for the tax cuts that President Trump put in. No, I remember that, Wilbur, and I remember talking to you around that time. The, the regulatory relief was actually the, the, the thing that they were really chomping at the bit from, really like that. Could I get your real quick impression, Wilbur, of something else going on here, that targeting in on billionaires like yourself, and of course, you're a rags to riches story. You weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You worked hard to get there. Um, and the book lays that out very nicely. But uh, now there's this push to say that, and a, a Kamala Harris campaign, it's, it's really trumpeting this, that you, you should pay more, that you're not paying your fair share, that the rich are not paying their fair share. And it's sticking. It seems to register in surveys uh, being done and, and is boosting her support. Does that concern you? Well, remember, the way that the communists, who now masquerade as socialists, felt that they could be permanently in power was two things. Get to where more than half the population doesn't pay tax. We're just about there now. Then the other yeah. part is get to where more than half the population depends on government for their income. That's where this group is heading. And that doesn't add to productivity. It doesn't make the economy grow. doesn't do anything. It just locks them in to political power. And I think that's the intellectual flaw in their whole program. Wilbur Ross, honored talking to you. And Wilbur, um, the, the book is Risks and Returns, Creating Success in Business and Life. Here's the one thing remarkable that Wilbur did in this book. He, you know, he, he, he looks at himself warts and all. He says and admits mistakes and problems he had. If I did an autobiography, Wilbur, I would never do that. I would only be praising myself <laughs> every step of the way. Every page would be, God, this guy's like Moses. Uh, but it really is a great book. I highly recommend it. If you really want to know the backstory on one of the most successful businessmen this country has ever produced, read, read the book. There, there are some tearjerker moments in there. Wilbur, great seeing you again. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you, Neil. Thanks for having me on.